I witnessed the time when the potato blight theory was rampant for spina bifida. We heard something about that yesterday. Well, it wasn't the potatoes, it was the ink and the paper that the potato chips were wrapped in thing. And eventually the trials and tribulations that led to folic acid. And with that, sort of this plummeting reality of spina bifida just was a disappearing nightmare. So I watched that. I also watched some of the interesting politics of that. As a group, we petitioned Health Canada to support um, the, the uh, introduction of, of uh, folic acid into the pre uh, prenatal thing. And that went on and on and on and on, back and forth, back and forth. Well, some little old lady might be pinching pennies and take prenatal vitamins to save money, and there's B12 in, sorry, there's folic acid in her, in her vitamin, and that suppresses the, the fact that she's got B12 deficiency and she'll get this terrible anemia and she'll get neuropathy, you know, well, supplement the pill with both sort of thing, you know. Finally, the Spina Bifida Association of Canada called this enough already, ladies, take folic acid. Then in 1999, the American uh, powers that be legislated that uh, folic acid be uh, mandatory uh, uh, added to flowers and cereal, food grains and things like that, but not Canada. Oh no, we couldn't do that. And then one day, just like that, overnight, there was a law passed. And that was because of free trade. Uh, Prime Minister Mul Mulroney had negotiated a free trade alliance with the United States, and we were sending massive amounts of wheat products into the States. And they said, wait a minute, no folic acid, no trade. Folic acid, you know. That was fun to watch that happen. Then, uh, with the decline in congenital malformations, came an increasing awareness of families' concerns about the genetics of um, behavioral and uh, behavioral issues. The autism, autism spectrum disorder type families started to come to the genetics claim for one primary reason, and that was for diagnosis, because with the diagnosis, the school board would provide you with an aid, okay? So they flooded in at the beginning just to get in the program. And then, of course, with the advent of some of these newer genetic techniques, particularly the, the, um, the deployment of microarray uh, testing, and all the different findings we are we're, uh, coming across. There's a wonderful website in this country called Unique, I don't know if you know about it, but if you just Google Unique, um, and there is a, a Unique chromosomal website. If you go on there uh, and click the right button, up comes a, a listing of all these different chromosomal deletions and all the syndromology and these wonderful seven, eight page reviews for parents. And this is written by parents, for parents, but it's, it's vetted by medical authority. It's just wonderful. So you can put that out. 